Welcome to Jamboki Biokert. We're at a three and a half hectare farm located in the village of Jambok, Hungary, about one hour from Budapest. Uh, we're an organic and uh, biodynamic inspired farm. We mostly focus on vegetable production, but we also have quite a diverse garden which includes about 100 fruit trees and a number of flowering pollinators. We have a small flock of sheep and also a very loyal workhorse as well who we work with. We have a team of about eight to 10 people who manage the garden throughout the year and we're diverse in age and background. It's really important for us to think of the garden and its holistic management because we know that soil and healthy soil is our most important resource. And what we're concentrating on here is building a healthy organism, uh, as well as keeping growing a farm which operates as a business as well. Besides the day-to-day -day work that happens in the garden, it's really important for us to remember that a garden is also a learning resource, a community resource, in which lots of different types of event can take place as well. So we're very proud that the gates of our garden are quite open gates and we welcome different types of community groups, including students who want to learn more seriously about market gardening for their professional career, to even novice gardeners who might have a balcony garden or small plot in a community garden in the city. And we're very happy to welcome these different groups here to help participate in what we're doing on the farm. The farm's been here for about 10 years and we started off with very simple infrastructure, but year after year we're working on uh, improving our techniques and focusing on efficiency so that what we do in the garden makes sense uh, and that we can manage things as efficiently as possible. In soil management, fertility management, um, in, in the biointensive method, I also call it uh, regenerative organics, um, we, we've got basically three main tools for fertility management. The rotation, the use of crop covers and green manures, which we'll look at, and also uh, the, the management of, of um, organic waste. In this case, we work with composting. Uh, we've developed a kind of a hybrid of the Johnson Sioux bioreactor in order to be able to work with a windrow, um, this, uh, this, this type of, of static composting system. We get uh, two or three uh, loads of, uh, of, of um, farm manure from a local um, uh, animal uh, husbander in the village and uh, he comes with his uh, horse and cart. We unpack the co compost and pile it up quite carefully to form a prisma, uh, a, 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 a windrow. And um, the function of these uh, uh, pipes is that um, uh, to create a chimney effect so we get an airflow, a passive airflow that's working continuously um, to help aerate the compost. Uh, we, ha we have the, the composting on these pallets, uh, which uh, when, you, when you've got an airflow coming through here um, uh, into the compost, and we pull these pipes out, out after a few days, and we're left with, a, with a, an airway that goes right into the compost. My, hand disappears right into it and I can feel the, I can feel the flow of, of warm air through, through the compost. It's warm on the top and it's cooler on the bottom so you get this chimney effect. So it's a, a passive aeration. When we've done a section we cover it with a straw cover um, in order to protect the, the microbes in, in the compost. Um, again it's like a it's like a, a skin on the, on the surface of the compost. We can use um, green, green waste from the garden, uh, crop trimmings, they can also go into the compost. If we look at one of our windrows that's about nine months old, um, we've got already a nicely uh, decomposed compost in it. Uh, it might not be completely homogenous right through, um, but uh, we can tell when it's a good quality just by the look and feel and smell of it. When it's got a good uh, forest floor smell to it, um, it's, it's, uh, it's showing that it's got uh, you know, all of the uh, 
beneficial bacteria and fungi that that, uh, that live in a in a on the forest floor. If we uh, look at the compost, which is pretty much ready for use, um, it's about a year old. Um, it's a it's not really an active composting. Uh, it's more passive, um, and the benefit of that slow. Uh, Composting as it matures, and, and there's an opportunity for the mycorrhizal fungi again to, to develop in the compost. Um, it's been turned by hand here uh, once or twice. We would like to have the capacity with machinery to turn uh, more the active early phase of composting and then have a slower process at the end of the composting. The bio-intensive uh, permanent bed system that we use here is based on a on a 80 centimetre wide bed and a 40 centimetre wide permanent pathway, and that's important. The pathways we only ever uh, walk on the path pathways. All the traffic is on the pathways. Um, we try under every condition to avoid going onto the bed because the compaction, uh, especially on our soil, which is quite heavy soil, it's easily compacted, so we want to avoid that. Um, and the beds are usually a, a tighter uh, sowing or, or planting than the conventional, uh, uh, traditional kind of planting distances. And the reason for that is both commercial to try and make maximum use of space, but also to try and have a, a plant canopy that covers the soil as soon as possible. Because what we want to achieve is the minimum period when the soil is bare. The soil under natural conditions basically always have a, has a covering. So we want to achieve that as quickly as possible. Um, and you can do that by, by close planting. So for here we've got uh, uh, um, celeriac uh, and it's 20 by 20. So we've got four rows in an 80 metre uh, bed, 80 centimetre bed. One of the soil management techniques we use in the biointensive method here is the use of what's known as ramial wood chips on, a, 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 on our footpaths. The reason for this is, uh, is to encourage mycorrhiza fungi um, to, to colonise the beds. Um, if you put wood chip into the bed, it'll, it'll lock up nitrogen. But if we have it in the footpath, um, it operates as a substrate for the mycorrhiza fungi. It's important what kind of wood chip you use. You need to avoid conifer wood chip, but rather use hardwood, um, uh, preferably uh, fresh uh, hardwood branches that have been uh, chopped up. And, and that acts as a good, a good substrate for the mycorrhiza fungi. If we look a little bit at how we prepare beds in the system, uh, usually the first thing we do in a bed preparation when the previous crop has come out is to, to go through the soil with a, a broad fork. This loosens uh, the, the soil to allow penetration, keeping the, the soil open and, and easy to work. One of the uh, benefits of the 80 centimetre uh, bed width is that you can see Logan easily straddles the bed width. And when you're working by hand every day, all day, uh, that convenience makes a big difference. We also, it's worth pointing out that we usually use strings to, to mark the edge of the bed while we're working. And we have a permanent bed width marker here, which saves a lot of time. These are these are always in the ground, so when we come to make a bed, we've already got the, the width of the bed and the width of the path marked out. We just need to put a string in, so it doesn't take a lot of time. Logan is uh, working the saw now with the wheel hoe. It's got a, a broad blade on the hoe, and it's not, it's not working in deep. It's about maybe five centimetres, uh, and you can see it, it, it works up a fine saw structure. But you can see our soil structure is good because there's, there's a diversity of, of, of sizes of, of crumb. Uh, so this is kind of the second phase of the bed preparation. 
a light cultivation. We don't call it no-till, this system, it's kind of low-till. Here on this bed we're actually going to sow uh, carrots, um, so we don't put compost on, onto this bed. Um, but for a crop where we're, which needs uh, is a heavy feeder, we'll put um, a good amount of compost on. Uh, we'll spread it on the soil surface, approximately uh, uh, 20 tonnes per hectare. That converts to around two or three wheelbarrow, sorry, one wheelbarrow for every two or three metres, depending on what, what we're growing afterwards. And we can turn that in either with the uh, wheel hoe or if we've got several beds at once that we're doing, we turn it in with a rotor harrow. The third phase of the bed preparation is, um, is just raking it. It looks like a lot of work, it is labour intensive, but this goes pretty quickly. Um, and you get a nice fine seed bed uh, here. The, the rake is a, is a Swiss made um, rake, it's 75 centimetre wide. So it's just the right width for the, for the bed width. The final phase in the bed preparation is just uh, to mark out the bed. This, uh, this is a bed marker which is nice because it, 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 uh, we can easily shift the row spacing. We, for a lot of crops we use uh, four, four rows to a bed. That's the 20 centimetre spacing between the rows. Um, and and we, so we just, uh, we just pull it between the two strings. You can see here where the strings are, are important. We just go down the bed and it goes quite fast, uh, just marking. So this would be either for a sowing, which could be either by hand or, or with a seed drill or planting out. Basically that's it with the bed preparation. When we've got, we've got the, the rows marked, we either sow into it or plant into it. Um, and then depending on the crop, uh, this was planted about five weeks ago. We've already got, this is spinach, we've already got a nice canopy over the soil. Underneath uh, it's nice and moist, good structure. And you can see the, the spinach is growing healthily. If we want to summarise the, the benefits of the biointensive bed system, permanent bed system, uh, the organic regenerative, uh, we've got uh, uh, close plantings, which is uh, commercially viable. We get a lot of cropping from a, a, a small area. We quickly get a, a, a soil cover, a canopy. Um, without walking on the beds, we maintain a nice loose soil. Good water penetration, good aeration, uh, essentially very good conditions for soil biology, soil life. The overall benefits of the, of the biointensive system is it's a, it's a low cost, low investment, um, uh, relatively easy to learn, um, although it's a complex system. Uh, when you take into account the rotations and everything, you need, you need experience, but quite quickly you can turn a new area of land into a very productive garden.